Hello everyone, I'm in the greenhouse today and uh, having a really, <laughs> had a really fun time. It's really relaxing in here. Uh, I got some music playing. I'm sure you guys can hear that. It's just great in here. I, I, it's, uh, it's Saturday and it's less than 31 degrees outside. Um, less than 32 degrees outside, sorry. And there's snow on the ground as you can see. Um, and what I'm doing is just some grafting as you can see here's here's a graft right here uh, there's some other grafts this one broke off because I knocked into it other grafts other grafts I mean there's just grafts everywhere um, and this is what I'm this is really what I'm trying to accomplish this next couple days is just try to graft um, all my fig trees because I did get uh, I did get a bunch of uh, new varieties, and a lot of my trees from last year, I prepared myself for this. Um, I knew I was going to get some new varieties, and I put on a ton of air layers last year. And I took them off, and this is the result of um, my efforts, is that I have roughly, uh, let's see here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, I have about... I have close to 20, close to 20 rootstocks. I, I, uh, I'm gonna buy two off a friend, and I'm tempted to buy like five more actually off eBay. Um, and that's kind of what I want to make this video about is you know just grafting fig trees, and you know why to graft fig trees, um, how to graft them. A lot of you guys have asked me that question because I made a couple videos uh, last year last last season and I showed you guys the step by step not exactly step by step but really the results of my grafting of fig trees first I grafted a smith tree a smith fig cutting onto a 20 gallon brown turkey rootstock and the results were incredible um, you know it's a 20 gallon rootstock so it's a pretty good root system brown turkey is a very vigorous variety so grafting anything onto that is going to be just really fast growing. And that's exactly what I got. I got 13 feet of growth my first year. And as soon as the graft took, um, I realized I could probably air layer the trunk of the tree. So uh, what I ended up doing was if, if this was the Smith graft I put on here, I air layered this down here so that I could then remove remove this down here, this whole branch, and I, then I would be left over with this rootstock to reuse it again. And that's exactly what I've done with my brown turkey rootstock, is that I removed the smith tree, I put it in a 10 gallon container, and I have a, a completely full size tree um, in one year. One year. So um, you can't beat it. You honestly cannot beat it, and I, I, rooting is nice. It's nice if you're only doing a couple cuttings, but if you're doing a whole bunch of cuttings, it can be overwhelming, especially if you're trying to build your collection. I personally think grafting is much easier if you know little little bits of information. I think it's not very difficult as a whole. It's just the little bits can make the difference, and the same thing with rooting as well. So. Uh, that's what I'm doing. It's just grafting, rather than trying to root everything. I am try I am trying to root everything. Don't get me wrong. But if I had root stocks for all the new varieties I had, uh, then I would totally graft every single piece of of sign wood I had. Um, the other great thing to grafting is that you only need a small scion here. These are the scions I'm working with. This is a two bud scion. This one right here is one bud, and this is two, and this is one. Look how small this is. So that's the other beauty of it. And uh, if you haven't seen my videos on grafting, if you haven't seen the Smith, the whole Smith series, really, um, I de definitely recommend you should watch it because it's to me it was, you know, being the plant nerd that I am, it was super awesome. 
It's probably the coolest thing I've done thus far. So, yeah, let's get into it. Oh, well, actually, before I get into it, I, want, I just want to show you guys around the greenhouse. Um, everything really is just growing. I mean, these are my pomegranate trees. They're really just taking off. And, you know, the, the reason I'm able to do this, uh, this grafting now and all these plants are now starting to grow. You can see back in there, there's just lots of green coming in now. If I can zoom in here. I mean, there's just tons of green just coming in. And it's just, it's just really great to see. It's, it's really exciting times. Um, yeah, I'm just really excited for this upcoming season. Here's my shade tree that's leafing out like crazy. Um, I got this from Edible Landscaping and last year it didn't grow a single leaf. A single leaf! I was so mad. And uh, this year it's just going nuts. I don't know if that's because of that's just what these trees do is that they just explode with growth as soon as they come out of dormancy. I don't know. But uh, I'm really excited to see that shade tree growing. And what's, what's important to notice about the grafting that I'm doing is that all the trees you see here are waking up. They're just now waking up. I turned on this heater down here. I have a heater down here by my feet because they're freezing. They're all wet, as you can see. But uh, I usually have a heater hanging up right here on this hook. And uh, the cool thing is that this heater allows me to be in here. First off, it's freaking cold out. And... Uh, the other nice thing is that it wakes up all my trees. You know, I did some rooting as well in here. You can see I have some rooting that I did. These are the containers I use. Um, and th this heater really just enables me to be able to do all this. It's freezing outside, as you can see. It, it's like there was a mini blizzard here last night. It didn't snow all that much, but the wind made it seem like it was a blizzard. Um, and this, this is really just the perfect time because when you're grafting anything, this goes for anything, this is probably the number one tip you'll ever hear about grafting. Um, you just absolutely have to have the right conditions for your graft. Uh, otherwise it might not work out for you. And the right conditions for a fig tree is when they're waking up out of dormancy they, the sap is flowing there's sap in these this wood here in, this, in these fig trees I can make a I can make a cut here and show you guys exactly what I'm talking about where are my pruning shears so I'll make a cut up here cut that off because I'm gonna graft it anyway and look the sap is now forming you can see that so the saps flowing you can tell it's flowing in fact you, the sap might be flowing a little too much, which isn't good either because uh, it might interfere with the graft, the cambium on the cambium contact. So you might want to watch out for that. And some people, what they do is they'll score the wood. They'll take a little piece off, almost like you you just take the bark off, and that will let the um, let the sap flow out of here rather than up here, and that'll just be a nicer. Um, higher success for your graft. Um, the other, the other thing that you need is that not only do you need the sap flowing and the trees just actively growing, but you also want the right temperature. And light doesn't really matter all that much. Um, you can do this in the dark, but you want temperatures between uh, 70 and 80 degrees. Now, fig trees and other subtropical trees. They just will not freaking grow when temperatures are below six, below 70, I'm sorry. Um, they can grow at 60 degrees, but it's really slow. Um, and I don't, I'm not an expert on every subtropical tree, but all the subtropical fruiting trees I, I deal with, like uh, citrus trees and fig trees and pomegranate trees, you know, they all grow really well at 70 and up. If they get below 70, it starts to really slow down, and uh, you're just not going to get the you're not going to get the growth that you want because what needs to happen is that you need to take this scion here. You can see on the you can see here. Let me just, let me get a really good shot of this. 
you can see on this wood here, it's very difficult to see, but right on the, right in the bark, the inner layer of the, the bark here, so the inner layer of this brown color is a green. Now, don't get confused with this, this, uh, see the white in the middle? Then the outer ring of that white is a brown color. Then the outer layer of that brown color is this white yellowish color. Well, the outer layer of that whitish yellow, yellowish color is a green. It's very small. It's very difficult to see. But that's the cambium, that's the cambium layer right there. And that's exactly what you want to make contact with. You want to make this, this green... Well, that's maybe even a better shot right there. This green um, wood right here, you want to make contact with this wood. Now let me show you exactly. Let me just take this sap off here. What just dropped? So you'll see here, here's the, there's green in both of these. I mean, the, the camera is not focusing very well. I'm not exactly sure how to solve this problem, but if you know anything about grafting and you're trying to learn about grafting, that's something you need to look up and you need to pay attention to is this is this cambium layer here. So All right guys, so um now I have you in a better location, hands free. And I wanted to show you the, the, the actual grafting process now. Um, now, I don't claim to be a grafting pro. This takes me quite a bit of time, especially when I first started out. Uh, one graft could probably take me 25, 30 minutes uh, because I really wanted to make sure it was right and it was good. Um, but now this thing probably takes me around 10 minutes per. I'm um, getting even faster than that, maybe five five minutes. So um, I just want to let you guys know that this stuff just takes time to learn, and some people can do this like in 15 seconds. You know, it's just like it's just nuts. Uh, so the more you do it, the better you'll get at it, and the faster it'll be. Um, what I like to do is um, I like to use the cleft graft, and the cleft graft. It's not exactly the cleft graft, it's probably a modified, I don't really know the exact name of it, but I think it's a modified version of the cleft graft. Uh, it kind of is the cleft graft because what I'm trying to do is match up uh, the thickness of the wood, with the scion of the thickness of the rootstock. Now this is much thicker than this. Um, so I probably won't use this one, I'll probably use a thinner one. But even if it doesn't match up perfectly, it doesn't matter. Because you can you can fiddle around with the graft and kind of slant it on, a, on its side to match up those cambium layers. And by slanting it, you really will get that, uh, that cambium contact that you want. And you, you don't even have to slant it. Um, slanting it just, if you can like imagine this, if I put this on an angle, um, it's going to make contact with two different points. Now, if this was the same exact diameter of, of this, then the cambium layers would match up perfectly. You know, that's the dream. That's the dream scenario. Uh, but you don't, you don't really need that because, like I said, you, can, you only need one cambium contact. Now, on each side of the, of the scion or the rootstock, we'll it will touch. So on this, on the right side or the left side for you guys probably, and the right side, it will make contact. You know, if that's not happening where you're getting both, that's okay because with the cleft graft, you're really only supposed to get one. Um, in fact, I'm using a thicker scion than the diameter, which is kind of unheard of and frowned upon in the grafting world. Not unheard of, but Usually you need a special type of graft to do that, and um, I just don't give a shit. So <laughs> I, I like this graft. I'm comfortable with it. I've had good success with it, so I'm going to continue to do this. And 
you can experiment with other types of rafts. I have experimented with other types of rafts, but um, this is the one that doesn't take me an hour to do, and uh, I just like it. So this is the graph that I'm doing, and um, you don't necessarily have to choose this one when you're doing figs, but uh, you know this is what works for me. So that's kind of what I'm getting at here. Um, do your research and try to figure out do different do different graphs and figure out which one you like the best that's that's honestly my best advice so here's what we're gonna do we're gonna start the the grafting process so I've already made a cut up here as you saw previously but I'm actually gonna make a cut further down here on the um, on the wood because if you see um, if you could see the entire tree here only the buds that are coming out are on the tops of the tree the tips um, there's a few a little bit further down um, but the reason for that there's a reason because the hormones in the plant um, this is called an apical dominance in the in the buds so if I wanted a bud to come down from the plants even from the crown of the plants it would be very difficult because there's apical dominance where the energy is being put into these uppermost buds in fact these uppermost buds will grow the quickest out of all the other buds. Uh, not only for sunlight reasons, but because more of the nutrients, I believe, is going into those top buds. So if you think of the plant on a level playing field, I want to make them all level so that as, as level as I can. I mean, it doesn't matter too much, but... I really want all these graphs to take and I'm actually putting on six different graphs on this one plant. They're all the same wood, they're all the same scion. You can do any kind of scion you want, uh, but I'm putting on the same particular variety on this particular plant. And then well, like what I said you can do before, what I did last year is you can air layer this branch and cut this off here and have a whole new plant. You can air layer this, this branch off and have a whole new plant. So. Theoretically, I can have six new plants from this one tree. And that's what I'm aiming to do, is either have six new plants or three new plants, depending on whatever I want to do. You know what I mean? So, so let's, um, let's actually get the, the grafting started here. And I have my wood here. Um, and what I'm going to just start out doing is... Um, using the sharp side of the knife, I'm going to just make some cuts away from myself, not towards my body. I'm not going to cut my fingers. This is, this is really foolproof here. I haven't really cut myself doing this. And I really just want to make, just make, you know, straight as I can. And, and I'm really forcing the pressure, the pressure down to get a straight angle. Because what I'm trying to do with this wood here is get a, get a, triangle one little tip I'm trying to get a very thin tip towards the top and it's going to be like a triangle and then that triangle is going to go into the the wood here so i can show you i'm going to probably cut this down to about here so i'm going to cut this off and i'm going to use this wood that i just cut off i'm going to actually use it as mulch for my tree and i'm going to cut it up into little pieces because i want this I want this to um, give nutrients back to the tree because any um, anything that the tree forms, like leaves, fruits, wood, etc., uh, that takes nutrients and that actually takes nutrients away from the soil. So I'm kind of in a way trying to bring it back to the soil um, in the form of mulch. And eventually, uh, it takes a while, but those these branches will break down again and give the uh, soil back the nutrients that it that it once gave to that wood. In fact, it'll give it back and then some. So, uh, what I have here is my scion and what I have... So, what I'm going to do is now is I'm going to show you the, the cut that I'm going to make so this makes a little bit more sense. I'm literally just going to make a cut down the plant here and this is the tricky part in terms of cutting yourself. There's got to be a better way to do this. I'm sure there is, but I'm just going to be really careful and try not to um, go down too far. But what I'm going to do is lightly push down and make a cut into that wood. 
and I'm going to make it just about as deep as my knife, the, um, the uh, whatever the hell this is, the width of my knife. And you can see, it's probably difficult to see because you guys are a little far away from me, but there's a split in this wood, down the middle of the wood. So if I were to take this piece of wood here and just make a cut down the exact middle of this wood, that's exactly what I just did. So I'm going to finish off my scion here and I'll show you guys what it looks like afterwards. And you, you always want to make fresh cuts too with your wood is that when you're, when you're taking cuttings to, you're taking cuttings to use them as grafting, to use them for grafting, I'm sorry. Um, it's hard to do this and talk to you guys at the same time. <laughs> Lots of focus needs to be uh, in play here. But um, when you're taking that wood, is that you really want to um, store it. And then uh, once you take it out of storage, you want to make sure that you're making new cuts on that wood. Because the very end of this, uh, this scion is going to be um, wood that has already been... Um, calloused is the word. So the wood that's already been calloused, uh, you kind of don't want that to happen in your grafting process. You want wood that's fresh and green uh, because you want the wood to callous with the other wood so they can kind of bind together. And I just made a terrible cut, but that's okay. Um, a lot of people will use a special technique to cut their scions to get them just perfect. I really don't think that matters. Uh, it doesn't really have to be perfect. And you can see that in this, I mean, this is far from perfect. I mean, look how bent, look how bent this side is right here. It's like a gradual, you know, this side over here is more of a gradual decrease or gradual increase into this thinness that I want. But the other side is really not. Um, really just ideally you want, you don't want any bumps. You really want a straight cut, you want a straight cut. And that's just going to give you the most success because it's going to give you better cambium contact. But like I said, you can, you can kind of fiddle with this thing. And that's what I'm going to do now is because, you know, this is much wider. You could see, I don't know if you guys can see that, but there's probably like four millimeters of scion that's just hanging off the side of the rootstock. So what I'm going to either do is, is try and get this thing on an angle like this so I can get multiple cambium contact, which is exactly what's happening. Putting this on an angle and I'm getting um, cambium contact on this side of the wood and on this side of the wood. And let me just show you what that cambium contact looks like. I'm going to take you guys down here. As you can see, the scion's in the graft. And on the the left side there, there is no cambium contact. Um, but there is actually, it's, it's down here on the side of the graft. Um, and then the cambium contact up here is up here on the top of the, the rootstock. So this kind of just ensures that you're getting that cambium contact that you want is if you put it on an angle and then that means you don't necessarily need to get the diameters matched up. It's really nice. The other, the other thing that's important is that when you stick this thing in here, you want to make sure that this bud is facing the direction that you want. Um, it is facing the direction I want because it's going to grow out this way and it's not growing uh, towards this bud right here that's going to grow out this way. And it's not growing towards the center of the plant either. So it's, it's really nice. And uh, this is pretty much a perfect graft. And I, I would be surprised if this thing didn't take. So I'm not done though, because what I need to do now is actually wrap it with a rubber band and wrap it with parafilm. And this is the end result, so you guys can see it. And then what you'll know, the other trick I've learned is that if I were to touch this graft, if I were to just knock into it like this, uh, this upper part, the scion, should not be wobbly. In fact, when I move this, this entire branch should move with it. 
And that's how you know that this this scion isn't going anywhere. Unless you really knock into that thing or you drop something on it. Me over here, I knocked into this guy, and this this one's really flimsy too. This is this is what you don't want. This is flimsy. Now this plant, I just had to do. I had to do this. This is like no other choice here. Um, I could probably, if this doesn't take, I could probably take this thing off. You know, like this guy fell off, and I could redo the graft, make a new cut right here, and then put him in there, and probably get him in there, situated a little bit better. That would be best because what happens is if you don't have like a a solid foundation here where you can just move this thing like this and it's not going anywhere. Is that sometime in the in the spring or summertime, um, it's not going to be very strong the graft. So you need to like really focus on getting this right now because it'll be really flimsy later on and very very prone to break. So, like I said, it's just very important to get this thing in here now. And this this thing really isn't going anywhere. And even just with my finger, it's not going anywhere. But And just to be sure, I'm going to use this rubber band here. And I'm going to wrap this rubber band all the way around the uh, the union here. Camera back and show you guys how I do that. So it's actually getting quite hot in here. I had to take off my sweater. Um, and that's how you want it in, in your rooting environment. Um, your rooting environment and in your grafting environment because it should be somewhere between 70 and 80 degrees and if you're wearing a sweater in that temperature it, uh, you're gonna sweat <laughs> like I am so uh, alright so let's get the rubber band we're gonna cut the rubber band and we're just gonna have one piece like this and then we're gonna wrap it around and uh, it's important to do the rubber band because it really is just securing this thing in place and eventually what you're gonna have to do is is take this rubber band off at some point um, I'm gonna let you be the judge of that obviously I'm not gonna you know answer every single person's graft question when they're like hey Ross should I take this graft off uh, I could answer the questions but I really don't have the answer because Last year I did a couple and the graft was still a little bit flimsy and it actually fell off. The graft, the graft just completely fell off uh, because I tried to air layer it and I was a little rough with the wood and the graft actually just kind of broke and I lost, I lost the graft. Another one was really flimsy and uh, it managed to hold on and what I ended up doing was air layering it off and then when I put that air layer in a new container um, I buried it kind of deep so that the graft wouldn't shift a lot and probably not too great for the the health of the plant long term because that scion is now going to send out roots but um, you know I did what I had to do to save the graft and to save the, the variety so um, yeah this is just a nice and then I just tied it on tied it off here and now what I'm gonna do is this this is actually kind of time sensitive I'm not sure why I've been I've been talking a lot and taking a while to do this but this wood here that uh, has been exposed to the air you really want to seal that off as quickly as you can because it can kind of dry out and callous pretty quickly with the air um, obviously the grafting tape is air permeable which means the air will go through that and that's kind of what you want, but uh, I don't know. I feel like you don't want this to dry out at all, which is exactly what I'm doing here with the parafilm tape. The, this is called grafting tape. If you're going to graft anything, if you're going to root anything, I suggest you buy this. And it's fairly cheap. You can get it on Amazon. You can get it, two rolls of it, half inch. I use the half inch parafilm. And you can use, you can get two rolls of this stuff for like six bucks and I think if you have Amazon Prime you get free shipping I'm not sure but it's pretty cheap and it works wonders if, if you're if you're rooting anything if you're grafting anything if you're growing fruit trees at all I think you should have this tape because it has many uses it's very 
very versatile and uh, it's come in the clutch numerous times so um, yeah definitely go with it and, th and this is the final thing of my graft here this is it um, when will I see uh, success I don't know uh, it depends it depends it could be it could be like three days or could be two months could be even longer than that um, if it's going towards the longer the longer uh, stage you might want to it's probably a good idea to take that graft off and then regraft it and you can cut off the bottom bud and start over and you can cut off you can make another cut over here so that you can put the knife in there um, only because it's it's likely it's not a hundred percent but it's probably likely that your graft didn't take and the cane beam contact isn't right um, so instead of waiting two months down the road to find out your graft didn't take it's probably a good idea to take it off and redo it um, but at the same time you do want to give it some time before you fiddle with it it's possible that the the scion you have isn't so great um, you do want an active growing rootstock but you times the scion is either a little too old uh, because it's been dormant for so long or it's in like a deep dormancy phase or the scion quality isn't so great anymore maybe it's dried out and the buds on the scion you can see here just won't they won't come out they won't budge and if uh, that's the case that that could be the case as well so you need to think about this from different angles and see you know what exactly is happening here um, I would say half the time my graph didn't take was because of the scion and the other half the time it didn't take was because the cambium wasn't touching it didn't it didn't make contact um, but overall I have a very large very high success rate with this and um, yeah it's just a phenomenal thing to do as a fruit tree grower I think everyone should know how to do this that's growing fruit trees um, especially you know even if you're not going to do it I think you should still know how to do it it's a very valuable skill to have um, the other nice thing the other thing I suggest that you do is is label your label your graphs. Um, I know what this is because I I wrote what this is on the on the container and I have a tag in here. But the as for the rootstock, but for the scion, you should really keep track of what that is. And I have a I have a little list here. In fact, I write it on my list and then I put it in my spreadsheet when I'm done. So um, make a list or keep track of your varieties. Um, and yeah, just give give ref, give grafting a shot, and that's really what I've been trying to do with my videos is try to get people to see things from a different angle, different perspective, and try something new because that's really what the joy of life is—is is trying something new. So, um, so yeah, guys, thanks for watching, and um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video, and I hope you guys start grafting, and see you later.